more professional projects, you're going to find in places like dangerous prototypes, which, despite the name, aren't that dangerous. <laughs> Some are. Um, these are more of the hardcore open source projects. These guys come out once a month, and they are much more um, well written than some of the more informal sites. These guys are, like right here, they're doing a phonemic speech synthesizer for the propeller, which is another version of those microcontrollers like the Arduino system. Um, these guys focus all their energy into one uh, video a month and then come out with the design and schematics for it. And as you can see, there's a lot of uh, back and forth between different uh, blogs out there because this is the same one that was in the packet. saved in my presentation, but they don't like, for some reason, to save the actual file to the presentation. <coughs> a lot of science slides are missing video links that I should go find the videos for. Because um, apparently no format likes to actually save video files unless they're actually on the TED Talks before, they are fantastic ways to learn about uh, a lot of different subject material. They are just short presentations, but they are extremely informative. This one is Prototype 8 of the 50 machines, 
And now the project is beginning to grow on its own. We know that open source has succeeded with tools for managing knowledge and creativity, and the same is starting to happen with hardware too. We're focusing on hardware because it is hardware that can change people's lives in such tangible material ways. If we can lower the barriers to farming, building, manufacturing, then we can unleash just massive amounts of human potential. That's not only in the developing world. Our tools are being made for the American farmer, builder, entrepreneur, maker, we've seen lots of excitement from these people, who can now start a construction business, parts manufacturing, organic CSA, or just sign power back to the grid. Our goal is a repository of published designs so clear, so complete, that a single burned DVD is effectively a civilization starter kit. I've planted a hundred trees in a day. I've pressed 5,000 bricks in one day from the dirt beneath my feet. And built a tractor in six days. From what I've seen, this is only the beginning. If this idea is truly sound, then the implications are significant. A greater distribution of the means of production, environmentally sound supply chains, and a newly relevant DIY maker culture can hope to transcend artificial scarcity. We're exploring the limits of what we all can do to make a better world with open hardware technology. Thank you. And I would like to touch on something you mentioned there. As uh, for some reason, uh, and being in the DIY community, I don't understand this myself. Somewhere in the last 20, 30, 40 years, we have gotten into the habit of locking up everything under patents, licenses, uh, copyrights. Everything we do now is licensed from someone or somewhere. Everyone's getting a royalty for something. And as he stated, human potential is the greatest source of energy. Um, I grew up at my grandparents on a farm. I have learned throughout my years how to fix practically anything. Because they came from a generation that did not waste. They didn't throw out anything if they could fix it. Today, everything is disposable. And it is the open source community that has gone back and said, no, we can fix this. We can make it better. We can make it work longer, stronger, faster. And that will be the future, is taking things out of the lockdown mode that they're in and adding human potential to it. And from there, the future will be born.